Hey, good morning. Whoa. <laughs> little dissonance going on there. Um, this is Christy Mattoon, Christy Renee from Mind Rewire and Christy Renee Healing Ministries. Um, first of all, thank you for being here. And please subscribe to my channel and like and comment, always comment because it helps these things move. And that that's a good thing when the videos move because that only helps my channel, but it also helps other people who hear this message who need to who who need to hear it, who need to hear whatever it is. Um today I'm gonna talk for a minute about my my judgment journey my lack of judgment journey. Um, so I did a video not too long ago about practicing non-judgment and how interesting that has been. And it's ongoing. Um, <clears throat> I've gone back to more the non-judgment and the holding space for myself in non-judgment, which doesn't mean I'm not only not judging me, I'm not judging pretty much anything around me. Um, and it's just gotten super interesting. So I want to show this to you because when you are practicing non-judgment, it actually puts you in a state of compassion. And compassion is a super high-charged, high-level energy that when you understand it and you can utilize it, it not only changes you as a person, it changes your outer world, your surroundings is what I have noticed. So I would say, first of all, define for yourself judgment. No, I lied, don't do that. You can do that also, but define for yourself the word compassion. Now I asked somebody to do this the other day and I looked up a few things and the stuff that I know about compassion from having learned and been taught for years is that compassion has to do with empathy and sympathy, right? And empathy and sympathy are used interchangeably, but they are two different things. So when you have sympathy, typically what we um, understand about sympathy is that it's about having a feeling of concern for somebody. And um, some would say almost like people will have sympathy to the point of feeling sorry for somebody. Um, and while both are forms of sim sympathy, I started to say symphony, sympathy, one is healthier. Yeah, right? To feel sorry for somebody, not only does that not do them any good, it doesn't do you any good because it puts information in your field. Okay. I know we under all we all understand that. Empathy is about connecting through feeling or connecting with feeling. It's what I've been taught, what I understand. And those two things are what link us to compassion. But I have been on a journey in my understanding of looking up things. So I'm going to show you what I looked up. I am going to show you, hopefully, let me see if I can share this really quick. What I have found about empathy, let's start with the, um, I'm hoping you're seeing this. I'll take a look at this video before I post it to make sure. Um, empathy, so this is an etymology dictionary. So there's just all kinds of information in here. Um, but empathy is a word, um, translation of Greek, Empathelia, which means a passion or a state of emotion, um, has to do with the N is the prefix, and then pathos, pathos is feeling, a term from a theory of the art of appreciation that maintains appreciation uh, that maintains appreciation depends on the viewer's ability to project his personality into the viewed object. And that comes from the root um, K-W-E-N-T, quent, meaning to suffer. Hold on to that for a second. Just hold on to that. We're talking about the word empathy. 
comes from a root word from the Greek meaning to suffer. Now, if we go to EM, the prefix, um, word forming element meaning. So this word helps form the meaning of a, of a word, this element. Put into, put in or into, or bring to a certain state. As in bitter, embody, so you're bringing it into a certain state. Emancipate, emerge, emote, emit, emotion, bring into a certain state. All right, put into. Now let's go back to the word empathy, to suffer, to put into, to bring into a certain state of suffering. Let's go on a little bit further. Pathy. I don't know why on earth I looked up the word pathy. I thought it would break out M path, P A T H, as a path like a road you're on. And then the Y doing something else, but there was actually pathy in here. A word forming element of Greek origin meaning feeling, suffering, emotion, disorder, disease, from Latin, pathia, from Greek, uh, pathia, <laughs> an act of suffering or feeling. So to put into, to bring into a certain state, feeling, suffering, emotion, disorder, disease, empathy. To bring into a state of suffering, disease, disorder, emotion, feeling. I was kind of blown away looking at this. Let's try the word sympathy. So sympathy from the etymology dictionary um, has a lot to it. Um, the Latin form, an affinity between certain things, body and soul, persons in their garments. From the French, sympathy, um, and Latin, sympathia, community of feeling, sympathy, they use the word to describe the word, um, community of feeling, having a fellow feeling, affected by like feelings, um, pathos feeling, which is related to, I'm not sure what that word says, pathian or suffer. And then we're back to that um, P-I-E root, K-W-E-N-T with the H. So I'm not sure how to, pr how to pronounce that. Um, quent, <laughs> um, meaning to suffer, right? Um, okay, so that was sympathy itself. So now let's go to the prefix sim, S-Y-M. Let's see, um, from the Latin, meaning together with, jointly, alike, at the same time. Um, together with, along with, from the Greek. Um, also, uh, source also of Russian, with, together. All right, so sim, meaning together with, so it's putting things together, with, together, and then we go back to pathy, to suffer, putting together suffering, people suffering, right? Which is kind of how we discern it, is we feel somebody su suffering, right? Sympathy, empathy, same thing. You're connected to the feeling of somebody else's suffering. Um, and even your own, if you have empathy for yourself or sympathy for yourself, it's this feeling or idea of being connected to the suffering. But why? <laughs> why do we want to connect to the suffering? Let me jump out of here real quick. So here's what I heard when I was asking all these questions. Was that we have been taught this all wrong. 
and through time, right, in order to keep our focus and awareness <clears throat> on the negative aspects of life, on the negative things that are put in front of us. We have been guided down directions with definitions, with language, with the way we um, are taught to present and to understand ourselves and the world around us is totally messed up. And I know a lot of you are on the same track I am with this. What I heard about compassion is that it's one's ability to look at another and basically see their light. No empathy, no sympathy by those definitions for sure. It's not about seeing the suffering. It's about seeing the goodness. Compassion is to look at somebody and see them in their state of perfect, pure wholeness. Feel that for a second. Notice what it feels like inside you. I'm just saying. Move away from empathy and suffering and move towards combat compassion. And I should take that word because passion's a word and comp is a friend. And I didn't even look because it has been so, everything has been so convoluted. But if you understand what I'm saying, what we were taught and how we were taught to, um, to understand it, puts us at a level of, of lower, like it ties us, it binds us to this place, right? The lower level um, feeling and thinking that it takes to, to keep this construct going. But if you move into the true essence of compassion, which is to see somebody in their light as their light, you're seeing them as their spirit, let's say, seeing them as their sentience, That by itself will start a range of healing, not only in you, but probably in them. All right. With compassion, with my, my track of trying to, um, my non-judgment practice, not judging anything, right? I look at something and I try not to put a label to it because the label by itself judges the thing. And it takes usually the goodness out of the thing if you've judged it by what we've been taught to call it. Even calling a tree a tree. It's wood, it's leaves, it's in the dirt, it grows. We have kind of a sciencey idea, but it takes its sentience totally out of it. Oh, you caught what I just said, didn't you? It does. Everything is like that. So I took the words away. I've taken, and to talk to somebody, you have to use the words, but Try and think of it differently. So with compassion, I'm, I'm looking at you as though you're light. You are the light that you are. And if you look at somebody and you don't see light, I honestly believe, and I've said this before, that there are different forms of humans on this planet. We are not all the same. Some do not come equipped with the light. It just don't, right? And they are the ones that will come up to somebody who is light and it's the combative. We start going at it because we are not the same. We don't blend. It's like putting oil in water. You might go as far as to say that is the evil walking in the world now that we are literally engaged in this crazy cosmic fight with. Okay. In my non-judgment, um, I have noticed that I don't have any reason to forgive myself, others. If I'm not judging you, there's nothing to forgive. That's huge. If you were taught from a place of religion or any, I mean, a lot of spiritual tenets, that you have to forgive yourself, you have to forgive somebody else, you have to forgive something for some reason, it is because you judged it somewhere. And if you take the judgment away, guess what? Forgiveness goes by the wayside. Super interesting. And from that place, you will have compassion because you can see its true light. Okay. I was watching TV the other night um, with my husband and he watches a lot of the singing shows like America's Got Talent kind of stuff. 
And sometimes there's some really good, good things on there. These people are amazing. Some of them are seriously talented. So he had got up to go wash dishes or do something. I forget what he was doing. And the next lady that showed up was this, I'm just going to call it the way I said it, right? And I'm, you have to understand I'm not judging. For me to even explain this makes no sense to me, but I'm not judging this woman. I was at one point her, not with a good singing voice, but I was fat. So I was watching this fat lady walk out on the stage. Beautiful, beautiful face. She was clothed beautifully, like she was beautiful, but she was large. She was fat, right? I was over 300 pounds at one point, but she started singing. And I thought in my head, as I watched her walk out, she's fat. And I went into my non-judgment mode. And I'm like, okay, because I was fat at one point, I can call it fat, but I don't know what else to call it, right? Unhealthy. I, you understand what I'm saying. And when I looked at her again, all of a sudden what I realized was that because of this construct and the negativity we've been locked in and the poisons that have been used on us in everything, in everything, right? We need water, we need air, we need food to survive, supposedly. And all of those things have been tampered with, yes? She walked out and I looked at her and it made me recognize that she was fat for the same reasons I was fat. It's no different. If we hadn't been tampered with, if we haven't been poisoned in any way by anything, what would we really look like? Think about this for a sec. The, the reason she was fat, I just said this, were the same as mine. Probably a food supply issue, probably um, illness problems, probably thyroid, probably um, emotional issues from childhood, right? Who knows? It could be a plethora of stuff. I had a ton of different things that I had to sort through to figure it out. But all of that came from a certain, um, certain things that happened to us because of the evil that exists on the planet, the difference between the light and what we are and what they are, right? We are the light and what they are. Divided us against each other to just look at somebody and have a judgment just because they were poison. But we look at it on a level of skinny, fat, tall, short, dark, white, right? Skin tones. And then we blame each other. We're led, literally led to blame each other. It's their fault they're like that. I remember listening to Queen Latifah for years about how she was proud how fat and how big she was. And it took me a long time to realize you can be proud of it if you want, it ain't healthy. That kind of weight on your body and my body was proof of it. It was not healthy. But we're led to blame each other. We're led to point fingers, blame each other, judge each other. And in this state of a non-judging practice, I looked at this woman and I was like, she's there for the same reasons I was there. And she may be in the middle of trying to figure it out, right? Which all of us get to that point eventually where, but because of compassion and non-judgment, I was able to look at her as the true light that she was and saw so much beauty. Absolutely amazing. But it had nothing to do with empathy or sympathy. I did not feel her pain. I did not connect to her feelings of self-worth or lack of. I did not go into the sympathy feelings about the whatever she might be. I was only looking at her light. Only looking at her light and going, wow. Wow. Do you understand what I'm saying? 
I hope you do, because for me, this was huge. So I'm assuming it's going to be huge for one of you out there. If you have been practicing the non-judgment practice, if you've been doing the non-judgment practice, playing the game of non-judgment, I'm guessing you're finding the same kind of level of stuff that I'm finding. And in that looking at people through the eyes of compassion, you start to see them as their true self, even while you're discovering your own true self. The energy is the same. We all came from the same source. And it is us. It is that. It is us. And so as you go through your week, as you go through your day, practicing non-judgment is super simple. Look at something and don't label it. Look at somebody and don't assign them meaning. Don't give them a word to describe what you see. Just look at them and see if you can see the light. That's true compassion. That is true comp compassion. I am throwing out the words henceforth, empathy and sympathy. I think they are trash. While you might have, or somebody else in the world might have some use for them, I think that they have let us all down a place where it makes us suffer and struggle because those words are very judgmental. Think about it for a second. Both of them give you reason to not only judge yourself, but everything around you by feeling by feeling, because you're feeling the outer form, and you're feeling um, the suffering. What if I'm not looking for the outer form? What if I'm looking for the inner form and that the true compassion comes through and alters, alters your whole reality to what this can be and how easy it is to get to. Like this is only a couple of weeks of literally a non-judgment, I don't judge anything practice. And if I catch myself doing it, I step back and I try again. It's hard to walk around not labeling things. <laughs> it truly is. But what an interesting, what an interesting thing to do. And it will definitely change you on the inside. I hope this helps. I hope this wasn't too long. I started rambling, I apologize. You're lovely. I am so glad you're here watching these videos. I have a lot of fun doing this stuff. And um, I don't know, as we keep rolling through this period of time, as I keep learning things like this that seem to make a difference in my life, I'll keep putting them out. Um, I do want to let you know, anybody who gets this far through the video, um, did finally talk to GM Wolf. And we are setting up um, it's a little bit different than what we had thought before, but we are setting up a um, hopefully weekly meeting to start with um, to help everybody out and get some questions answered. And um, more details will be forthcoming. That will actually end up starting on the. Um, ba -ba -ba, I lost my calendar on the 27th. So it's going to be on a Sunday. It will be on Sundays. It'll be like a fireside chat kind of idea is what we're doing. Um, but you'll be able to get on live and ask him questions. And you can ask me questions too. I don't mind that, but I'll be kind of uh, mediating and moderating that. Um, yeah, so super fun on that. I'm glad he is okay and finally made contact. And I bless you. Please comment below. Um, Keep your eyes open for more information on the 27th. That is our definite start date. And thank you for being here. Like, share, and subscribe.